seems like almost every make and model of unique muscle car is represented here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. And I'm standing here with Gary Riley from Level One Restorations in front of a one of 12 Firebird. That's right. Yeah, 12 four-speed convertibles with this optional Ram Air 4 engine. Now, the Ram Air 4 is a bad machine. I mean, tell us what was going on with the Ram Air 4. Well, they, they advertised the Ram Air 4 in a Firebird at 345 horsepower. Uh, this one with no extra tuning or any special attention whatsoever, dynoed at 425 horsepower. Really? Yeah, if you want to put that a little bit more on the razor's edge, you can see 450 with all stock parts. And the stock parts that make this happen are the cylinder heads and of course the legendary Ram Air 4 camshaft. That's right. Uh, high compression. Yeah, the Ram Air 4 camshaft is really the heart of this engine. It was the first computer design cam out of a manufacturer in the 60s. Pontiac had a lot of really good uh, engineering at the time, and uh, this was really the, the pinnacle of that, this Ram Air 4. So if there was only 12 Ram Air 4 four-speed convertibles made, uh, what was 69 Ram Air 4 production like? Because they spanned it across the GTO and the Firebird. Yeah, the, the Firebird, uh, they didn't get a lot of the advertising budget like the GTO did, so their numbers were quite a lot lower. Hmm. And I don't have the exact numbers, roughly 155, 100, something like that. Sure, but less than a couple hundred. Yeah, less than a couple hundred. 55 of those were Trans Am hardtops. Um, so the rest of them were Firebird hardtops and convertibles here. Interestingly, none of the Trans Am convertibles came with the Ram Air 4. So if you're talking Firebird convertible, it's these 12 cars, <laughs> well, 12 four-speeds four speeds. and five automatics, which I think are really sleepers in the market today. There's a lot of interesting numbers there. I think, in, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the Trans Am and in the Ram Air 4 Firebird, both of them had, well, see, the Trans Am was split auto and manual? Four automatics and four four-speeds. And this had seven and five, or 12 and five? Uh, 12 and five, Only yeah. five automatics. Five automatics, two are known to exist today. Boy, that's yeah. different from what you'd expect. Five of these, two automatics. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite of what you would expect yeah, wow. on a survival rate. Okay, so how does somebody find one of 12? And how many of these do you think are left now? Uh, there are five of them. Uh, the five that exist right now have been known for at least 10 years. So none have surfaced recently. Certainly, a couple could. It, it's not likely. It hasn't happened in a while. I know where all five are, who owns them. <laughs> uh, so you can't fake it. Right. <laughs> Don't where they're at. What, yeah. every, it's pretty well known amongst yeah. the Firebird collectors who has them and what's going on with them. There's a couple owners of them here today at this show, came to see the unveiling of this one. So Very cool. Yeah. So uh, what was your part in the restoration and, and how bad was the car? Well, we, uh, to, to go back to the very beginning, my customer tried to buy one at a RM auction, another Ram Air 4 car. We weren't successful at that, so we went after a restoration project. And uh, this car was a complete basket case. It, uh, when we looked at it, it was just the, the body on a rotisserie, and the parts were all just packed away in boxes. Wow. So we bought that project, brought it home, and uh, took an inventory of the parts, started looking for some of the unique items. All the engine and all that stuff, all the really special stuff came with the car. So this is the correct motor and trans yes. numbers yep. matching? And the, uh, you know, the, some of the tougher items for this car we had to source out. The rear leaf springs are unique to 69 Firebird only. And uh, a lot of other pieces are unique to just 69 Firebird, which makes it a challenging restoration. So, you know, we did the whole thing from start to finish, every nut and bolt. Because it's, although it's uh, it's an F body, it doesn't interchange everything with a Camaro. Yeah, 69 in particular shares few things with a 69 Camaro. The entire dash is different. All this radiator support and front end stuff. Yep. Like I said, the springs, of course the engine, the whole drivetrain is different. Right. Even some of the interior pieces, you know, the, the A-pillar trim pieces, things like that you wouldn't expect to be different wow. are different. Yeah, you would think that would be just a carryover. Yeah, not a lot you can pull from a Camaro. Well, the other thing I see is the color, and it almost looks like Fathom Green, but what is it? Yes, it's Midnight Green on a Pontiac. So it's the same color, different name? Yes, that's right. Um, the only one of the surviving cars that's green, two blue ones, uh, two dark blue, one light blue, and a silver and a green. So. Wow. I really like this color. It wouldn't have been my customer's first choice, 
but I think all done now, everyone agrees it's it's a fantastic look. Well, I always thought that the greens, I grew up near here in the Chicago area, mm -hmm. and it seemed like the green had some sort of rust preventative or pigment in it because only the green cars seem to survive. Yeah. And they always look awful, but you, when you get one that's all shined up, they look really nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, you can see why someone would have uh, ordered a green car or certainly bought one off of the lot mm -hmm. when it was sitting there. And take me through the interior. Is this all new in this car, too? Or? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the interior, we pretty much have to custom make all of that. Um, there's some really good companies out there making upholstery and whatnot, but uh, for us and my customer, it's not close enough, so we'll take the middle part of a seat that is made and recreate the rest of it at, at the upholstery shop from scratch, so the fit is just exactly what it needs to be. So going to those levels, and, and I agree with you that a car that is this significant deserves that kind of treatment. What about some of the other plastic items or rubber weather stripping or things? Are we yeah. taking off the shelf parts here? Or what are we doing? Uh, mostly new old stock parts. The door weather strips are up around $2,000 for a pair of those nowadays. Uh, oh it has new old stock trunk weather strip seal. Um, I like to restore original parts whenever possible. Um, the door wind laces are original. Um, it takes a lot more effort to use those and have them restored. Uh, but the reproduction really just doesn't cut it on a car like this. There's only five of them, you know, it deserves Left. to have the right stuff. Is there any uh, super unique or bizarre options on this one or anything you think is really cool? Um, I mean, besides the drive the, one. The, the engine, <laughs> yeah. of course. Power windows is a little bit unusual ah. on a Firebird. Um, and the one thing I didn't realize uh, initially being a more of a, a GTO, A-body type of a restorer, it has a power top, which was an option on a Firebird and a Camaro. They came standard, obviously, just with a manual top. So. Yeah, we're used to those on the bigger cars. That's right. But a power steering, power brakes. Um, it has a rear seat speaker, a little bit of an unusual option on a convertible. Hmm. Other than that, you know, pretty straightforward rally wheels and uh, the go fast stuff. Well, the car looks great, and I understand um, you guys had it judged here at the Musk Car Corvette Nats. Yeah. We do okay? I think so. Maybe just a few points. So uh, I think we came pretty close to. Is this a thousand point score. scale at this one? A on? thousand point scale. And you're talking upper 990s? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think above, you probably did okay. Yeah, 996 yeah. or better, I would say. So. <laughs> Very nice. Well, congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome Thank car. You. Great job. Thanks a lot.